In this tutorial, we're going to start working on the box model that I'm going to use to create the foundation for the dragon's head that we will then bring into ZBrush. Now, you can go about creating this many, many different ways. As a modeler, I've been a polygonal modeler for a long time, I've been used to working with the box modeling method for a very long time, and therefore, um, this is kind of what I'm comfortable with, I, what I stick with. You could potentially go into ZBrush and do this with Z-spheres, whatever is up to you. It doesn't really matter. Um, one of the big things for us to keep in mind when we're working uh, with jewelry is that tessellation or um, uh, topo basically topology doesn't really matter. So long as we have enough detail, that's all that matters. But the actual topology or the layout of uh, the, the lines and faces on the surface of an object doesn't matter because we, we aren't intending on animating it. Okay. The only time where it could cause any difficulties is if you had uh, some faces that created, um, you know, like more than five lines coming together at a single point, for example, you might get some tearing and whatnot. But this really won't be a big issue for us because as soon as we create our geometry here in Maya and bring it back over into ZBrush, we're going to uh, put it through Dynamesh and Dynamesh will handle all of the topology for us. So it will be really quite... Um, quite easy to work with and just easy to sculpt. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go back to that previous scene that I had uh, and I'm just going to open up that. Uh, the reason for this is I would like to keep the scale of things pretty well managed. Uh, remember this scene was created with millimeters in mind. The ring is created to be exactly the size that it's intended to be uh, 3D printed at. So if we were to come in here and then bring in our image planes uh, into this view, then we would be able to size up the image planes to more or less fit exactly where we want them to be on the ring. And that way when we're modeling this thing, we're basically modeling it at scale, which makes things a lot easier in the end. So I'm just going to go to uh, View, Image Plane, Import Image, and I'm going to take the uh, side view here, Dragon Ring Concept Side, and open that up. Now you can see by default that this is much larger than the ring itself, so if I was just leaving this at the uh, default size and the sculpt I would be making would be much larger than I need it to be. I'd have to scale it down later. I kind of just want to get around that step to begin with. Another thing to note too, in Sanjana's um, concept here, we have the approximation of a circle. It's not a perfect circle. And that's okay. You know, this is just concept work. This is just something for us to get an idea from. I'm going to be mostly concerned with just the circle shape that's at the top here because I'm mostly concerned with what with where the dragon's head is sitting on top of the ring. So if I just quickly go into my attributes and I will take uh, my uh, image width and height there, I'm just going to pull these down a bit, maybe a bit more there, and I'm just going to adjust this up until I feel like this sits on top of the ring uh, pretty nicely. So let's pull that down a bit more. Okay, so it needs to be a little bit wider now. And that looks pretty good, I think. Okay, I think that that sits pretty nicely. Now, also to note is that the dragon head here appears to kind of sit into the ring a little bit, like the, the face comes down into the ring a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about that. This is going to be close enough for us to work from, and um, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think that will work fine. Um, one thing to be aware of whenever you're working on a ring, of course, is that obviously it has to be comfortable enough to wear. And, for instance, when you look at the, the uh, concept here, our ring, it gets a bit wide here um, on the sides. And this was something that I had to, um, to make sure that Sanjana understood when she was creating the concept for this, that you, know, you, you don't want the ring to be uncomfortable. You need to be able to have it sit on your finger without being too aware that you're wearing a ring. Um, and so also make sure that the face doesn't go over too far or too far down especially because then that becomes very cumbersome to wear on a finger. Um, another thing that is probably worth pointing out, this was the first concept that she came up with. Um, and I, I bring this up because um, one of, part of my feedback back to her was to uh, take a look at all these spikes, right? Um, they're cool, they're, they're visually cool, but they're not tremendously useful, or they're, they can be actually dangerous for somebody to wear. Um, so if that is your intention to have spikes on your dragon head, for example, 
bear in mind that you'll definitely want to round them off because if you're going to be casting this in metal, now these are metal spikes, they're actually like a weapon. And you don't want to be wearing something on your finger that can either injure you or somebody else, depending on who it comes in contact with. It can also snag on things like cloth or whatever else that you come in contact with. I also encouraged her to close the mouth of the dragon because when you go to 3D print this, it's going to actually be quite difficult to reliably print this mouth. Usually when we have big overhanging areas like this, depending on the 3D printer you're using, um, you might have to create supports so that this has something to hang on to because so, it doesn't really just float in space, otherwise it is not really connected to anything. Um, and as a result, it would be very difficult to create supports in here that would give you a nice result. So I just had her close the mouth, that's why you'll see in the in the sort of updated version of this it's closed. And she more or less get rid of the spikes and kind of put a bit of a mane on uh, the dragon. So if you do want to go with spikes, make sure that you round them out and make sure that they don't end up being really pointy. And also too, depending on the 3D printer that you will end up using, anything that sort of overhangs without any kind of um, support, for example, let's just say this tooth. This tooth, if I was printing the, th the, the ring from the bottom up, okay, uh, there is material all the way throughout the ring as I'm moving up, but the tooth itself sort of sits here and there's nothing below it. And so all of a sudden the 3D printer would be trying to print a layer right here and there's nothing for it to hold on to. And therefore this is going to detach and it's not going to actually sit where you want it to sit and it's likely going to cause an, a printing error all the way up here where part of the face just doesn't actually print. That's, speci that's definitely the case with the 3D printer that we use. Um, and like I said, it depends on the kind of 3D printing that you're doing. But generally speaking, if you are doing 3D printing for jewelry, this is a concern that you would have. Um, the way around that would be to work with a, when you give it to the people who are doing the 3D printing, to um, basically give them the model and explain to them, hey, look, this is, these are some of the overhang areas, and these are the areas that could lead to problems. And then they can sort of evaluate it and let you know whether or not the supports that they can generate would help or if they would hinder your progress. If in doubt, you know, try to find a simpler solution, which in this case was just to close the mouth. All right, cool. So back in Maya now, um, I basically have this sitting more or less where I want it. It's close enough for me. Um, I am not terribly concerned with uh, bringing the front view in here, but I could do that. Um, or I should say actually the side view. Apologies. And uh, let's just let's just do that. So image plane, import image. These image planes were made so that they are in fact the exact same size and that the uh, the base and the top of the heads more or less sit exactly on the same um, horizontal lines. So I'll just bring this in. If I apply the same um, transforms to this image plane as I did this one, uh, which was a 47.360 width and height, and just move this one up to a value of y equals 6.1. Now they more or less, well, it doesn't look like they entirely sit exactly the same place, does it now? Interesting. Let's just see here. Actually, they, they do in the 3D space. So it's rather, oh, actually they do. Apologies, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself here. As you see, the, the base of the ring is here, but the base of the drawing is actually here. Ignore my stupidity for a moment. Um, and this is mostly lined up correctly. I'm just going to bring it back in Z here a little bit just to realign it slightly. There we go. Great. Um, the reason why I do this is because ultimately I'm probably going to create separate geometry for the eyes just so that I can sculpt around the eyes um, in ZBrush. And this way it will help me to know how far out those eyes should be. Okay. So I don't want to see these image planes here in the perspective view, so I'll just change their display to looking through camera. Both of these. Great. Now, um, I also don't really care about this ring at the moment, so I'm just going to go ahead <clears throat> and put all the ring stuff on its own layer. So I'll just create a new layer there. We'll call this our base ring. Save that. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn that one off. I'm going to start out in the front view here, and let's go ahead and say we'll create a polygon primitive um, cube, right? And that creates a cube down there. Now this background image plane here is a little bit too uh, 
bright for my taste. So I'm just going to pull that down quite a bit. All right. And I no longer really need the grid lines on, so I'm going to turn them off as well. So now with this cube, I'm just going to scale this up a bit so that it fits more or less the same size as the head right about there. If I just put this into a shaded view, it should be a little bit easier for you to see. Um, I'm just going to create some extra geometry on this cube. So I'll start out with uh, adding three subdivisions to the width, height, and depth. And that should be enough to get us started. This is going to be a really, really simple box model. I'm just going to start dragging stuff down to really approximate the overall shape. Uh, like I said, I'm really not concerned with topology, just more concerned with blocking in volume. That's all. I'll do most of my sculpting, most of my um, geometry transformations and stuff like that in ZBrush. And so let's just uh, come into the front view here. Let's grab the front faces. I'll select those there. Control select to deselect the other faces I don't want. And shift right click, go to extrude face. And I'm just going to extrude these faces Go away, at best. It's going to extrude these faces um, down like this. Okay. I'll pull these all the way down toward the end of the snout and go back into vertex mode. Pull that down there. Maybe pull that down there. And this. I presume uh, that you know how to box model. That's kind of a presumption that I have based on you know you're an avid reader of 3D world, you've learned a bit of box modeling. So I'm not going to go into all this process too terribly greatly, but since I am having to model this to get the tutorial done anyway, I figured I'd show you my entire process. If you want, go ahead and skip forward. Um, if you know how to do this already, save yourself some time. If not, just follow along with me and I'm happy to have you with me. Okay, so uh, face mode here, grab those faces, control select to get rid of the other faces and we will extrude backwards once again. Pull that down. And this is about as much geometry as I really need to get started. I'm not worried about really blocking in the main up here yet. I'm sort of just thinking along the lines of where does the top of the neckline sit. Not entirely sure if this main is meant to be hair or if it's sort of flowy scales. I think it's kind of like hair. Um, so we're just going to treat it sort of like hair. Now ultimately in the end, my thought process is I'm going to finish off sculpting the dragon's head and he's going to have sort of a nub at the back of his neck. And I'm just going to have to pull that down and blend that into the ring, uh, the base ring that we've created. But we'll do all that in ZBrush. Okay. So that pretty much gives me the basic geometry that I need. What I want to do just now is to go in and essentially um, just tuck some things in closer together and pull things out a little bit wider to keep the proportions of the face a bit more honest. So if I come to this view here, let's just go ahead and um, go to our image plane. And come on, image plane. There we go. Um, I'm just going to turn the alpha gain down here as well. So, just keeping this as a guide, more or less, go in and grab vertices. Actually, I'll grab faces. Faces will be a little bit easier. If I look at it from the side view here, I'm thinking like the widest part of the face, this stuff here, that's sitting more or less along these faces here. So I'm just going to pull them out a bit. Actually, I might just grab the edge line there. I think the edge line's a little bit more accurate. grab that whole edge loop just by double clicking on it and I'll actually scale it out. Okay, so that looks good there. Okay, that's about right. Um, these faces here at the front, I just take that and take these three here as well. Scale those in together as well and it just creates a bit more of a, a nice snout. Might repeat that same process here.
and selection can be tricky at times. There we go. Pull those in together. Okay, it's a little bit nicer. Um, and just overall, you know, the snout is kind of coming a little bit closer to uh, together. There we go. Let's pull that in a little bit more there. All right. The one thing that I, I do like to avoid pretty much at all costs is any kind of blockiness. So what I will do is just kind of take that line and that line and I'll pull them in together a little bit like that and I'll just pull them down a little bit. That way it starts to round out uh, this shape a little bit more, a bit more organic. Is it entirely necessary? No, I'm probably being a bit obsessive about it. But it is how I like to work. It makes me feel comfortable. One thing I notice when I watch other people work is that you know they always have a different workflow and it works for them. And sometimes I find something in it that I like that I you know adapt to my own workflow. And other times um, I just um, I appreciate more what I do. But usually there's something you can pick up from somebody else. Okay, just. Pull these ones down. There we go. All right. So I think that's good enough to start with. It's a box model. It's not intended to be anything that looks wonderful. So let's go back into a shaded mode here. All right. Um, so I'm just going to export this out. Uh, I might go ahead and save it as a separate file first. So I'll save this as it's called a Dragon Box model. And let's go export this out. So export selection, and we'll say dragon head base, right? And I might even say to ZBrush, so that I know that that's the one I want to use. And that should wrap us up for this section. And the next uh, lesson, I'm just going to bring this into ZBrush, and we're going to start talking about how we will approach the sculpting. And then we'll just go into kind of a freeform sculpt, and I'll talk about that.